Hey, welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, and today we're working on my two-post lift. It's time for some maintenance because my lift arms aren't going up evenly left to right. So you hear that clack, 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 clack as they go up, and that's not a very safe situation. So what we're gonna do today is a little bit of maintenance to adjust the cables, torque all the bolts, and throw some grease at it where it needs it. So come along and let's make this thing work properly. Let's start with the tools that we're gonna need for this project. You can see I've got an assortment here, plus the big old ladder that was in the first shot. And really, some of the more important tools are the big pry bar and the torque wrench. The rest of this is gonna be a little more specific to your lift and your circumstances, but here's where we're gonna start. What I've found is that the lift arms predominantly aren't going up evenly with a truck on the lift, and even more so when I had my F-350 on the lift. It has a 48 gallon fuel tank on the left side and the left side was lifting slower than the right. And that's because it's not balanced. Most vehicles aren't balanced left to right. That's why these lifts, whether it's a direct drive or with chain over roller, that's why these lifts have adjustable tension cables or balancing cables for left to right balance of the hydraulic system. Otherwise, they're just gonna flow to the path of least resistance and one arm will wanna go up faster than the other, which is what we're running into. This lift is a little bit over six months old and it's about time to look at adjusting these cables. Once they're adjusted a few times, you probably won't have to make many adjustments to them in the future because these heavy duty steel cables are gonna hold that tension pretty well, but you will have to double check regularly. So let's start by taking a look at the cables. This is what I would consider the right side of the lift. So this cable and adjustment set controls the left side or driver's side. Depends if you back in or pull in, right? So the way that my lift instructions say the cable should be is they should be tight, but still have about an inch of play. So what I'm looking at is the distance from here to about the middle of the hydraulic ram. And as you can see, this one moves way too much. Let's take a look at the other side, this side, has what I would say is about the right set of free play. So what we're gonna do is we're going to lift up onto the first lock and double check to see how those are looking and then make our measurements or our adjustments from there. You could hear there the clack clack, they weren't even. So we're on the right track. Back on the pump side or the right side and we still have too much play here. So what we need to do is we need to get our channel locks on the lower nut because it's fairly difficult to get a wrench in here. Then we're gonna drop our big old socket. This is an inch and a 16th for me and extension over the top of our ram and break that tension free on the top lock nut. Now we're gonna spin that top lock nut up and this is where our pry bar comes in, super handy. Instead of trying to get down underneath to hold the cable in place or try to hold the cable in place from up top, what we're gonna do is use our pry bar, give ourselves some leverage, and then all we can do is spin that nut down and come up with the appropriate tension. About an inch, remember, is what we're looking for, and check that on both sides. Now, before we go ahead and torque our lock nuts down, we're gonna run the lift arms up and see if our adjustment is good one or two times, and then we'll lock everything down. Coming down without a load, this takes a while. All right, so that adjustment worked. Now we just wanna cinch down those lock nuts on the top. I don't believe there's a real torque to those other than just locking them in place. And then we're going to check our lift arms and make sure everything's tight on those. All right, so aside from the uh, lift cables, the rest of this is pretty quick. What are we checking on the lift arms? Well, if you go to pull one of these arms out, you really don't want this guy slipping off. So what we're checking is to make sure that these retaining bolts are tight and they haven't backed out. As you can see, I took these out for a dramatic effect, but it would be a pretty sad day if you were trying to pull these out under a car and they went wing, or if uh, some dramatic, horrible thing happened and the car was in the air and these slipped and they didn't get caught, at least in some simple measure right there. I don't know that it would stop the car from falling if you did something stupid that the laws of physics took over, but 
these guys are just a good safety measure so that it's not going to pop out. Now let's get the lift up a little bit further. We'll grease up the trolleys or carriages or arm holders or whatever these big things are called. But before we grease up the uh, carriages, I have a message from today's sponsor. Well, you guys, because without you watching these videos, I wouldn't have the views and I wouldn't be able to continue on. So thank you. These don't take much grease. You can see there, I just threw a little into the corners and in here you can't really see on the inside. The nylon rollers or sliders, you can see a little bit right there. They're not under any tension, so they're just moving along gently in there. The next grease points would be our locks. So I like to throw a little bit of grease on here and on our pivot pins so that our arms rotate nice and free. Then on your adjustment points at the ends, I throw a little WD-40, that way I'm not getting grease on anything out there at the end. Down on the bottom where the ram is, I like to keep the base clean so that when the seal comes down, it's not picking up a bunch of dirt and so that I can tell if there's anything leaking or awkward going on at the bottom. On the sides, you wanna pop your covers off. I, I pulled the screws loose on this already. And just double check that you have good adequate tension on your lock cable so that when you go to release it, it's going to release on both sides. You don't accidentally get one getting stuck and then the car tilting and you freaking out and then it flipping over and then everybody running for the hills. You know, that would be horrible. While you're raising the lift up is a good opportunity to check your over height switch or your limiter switch at the top to make sure that you're not gonna crush the roof of a taller vehicle. That works nicely. And while you're checking switches, I have a emergency cutoff here. That way, if I'm right here, something were to short out, I can easily pull this switch because my breaker is outside. <laughs> while you have the lift arms up out of the way, take your torque wrench and depending on the bolt size that you have in your concrete, 90 to 100 foot pounds, that's what mine's rated for. Double check that your anchors are torqued down too. Those are probably some of the more important bolts on this whole setup because you don't want this falling over or ripping out of your concrete. Now that we have all of our groundwork done, it's time to grab our last uh, socket and wrench, climb up the ladder and make sure that our bolts up at the top of our crossbar are nice and tight. You can see these are our bolts up top to the crossbar that runs across. And for me, there are two on either side. And while you're up here, take the time to take a look at your cable run all the way across and make sure that there's nothing chafing or rubbing, jammed, stuck, or otherwise. All right, we're wrapping up quick. Our last check on the lift is our actual pump assembly and fluid level. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. My unit specifically calls for an oil change once a year. I don't know that that's gonna be totally relevant for me as I'm not using it in a commercial setting. The fluid level is full, there are no leaks, and it is still completely clean and clear and smells brand new. I will say from experience though, I did not change the oil soon enough on my Benpack lift. It uses uh, Dexron hydraulic oil or transmission fluid versus actual hydraulic oil. And moisture built up over time caused some corrosion in one of my cylinders, which then required me rebuilding it because corrosion doesn't go well with the seals. Either way, Take a look at your fluid, make sure that it's topped off, that it isn't um, discoloring or changing in any way, and change it at whatever interval works for you. Hey, I hope that you got something useful out of this video, even just one tidbit, adjusting the cables, or maybe, uh, I don't know, any little bit of it, to help keep you safe using a lift at home. I know that we tend to feel pretty comfortable when we have these tools, but these are things that if you forget to do, they can be really dangerous. Once again, thanks for watching. Drop a comment below if you do other things to maintain your lift and keep it operationally safe. And take a look at one of these videos up top. Like, subscribe, do all those things. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a good one.